Well, it was a disastrous Saturday, almost catastrophic Saturday, but it was a win. Hello again, everybody. Welcome to Tiger Sidelines on MC22. Gabe DeArm and Dave Matter, and I'm Bo Bayman. It's a 42 to 10 win over Troy. 42 points in the first half looked pretty good, but really the story comes after the ball game. Ever, <laughs> it came in the hit to the quarterback, and everybody worried about that. But the worst news comes with Cale Garrett out for the season. Yeah, and nobody really was thinking about this because you couldn't tell. We even both went back and watched the game, and it was hard to tell when yeah. he got hurt. Yeah. But, you know, he didn't play in the second half, but a lot of guys didn't play in the second half. So right. we thought nothing of it, and everybody's focused on, oh, no, is Kelly Bryant going to play? And then all of a sudden, just because of the way it happened, it almost felt worse when yeah. when you got the news Cale Garrett was out because it was if they had said Sunday night like Kelly Bryant's out for the season like you're devastated but yeah yeah we could see that that's not a shock it, you saw that one happen and then mm -hmm. like you said you go back and you watch it and watch and you say well this was the play where he got hurt you really don't see anything. It's kind of one of those freak things. Yeah, there's a bunch of plays where it looks like he's kind of favoring one arm, mm -hmm. and he didn't want anybody touching it. Teammates are jumping on him after interception. He's kind of getting away from him, pushing him away, had trouble taking off his helmet. But again, it is hard to find one play, and it might have been a you know matter of, it. hey, the, the thing popped, and then it just got worse and worse and worse. And hey, the guys, I think after the one <laughs> where he did get hurt, he still played 19 snaps after that, including a bunch of tackles and two interceptions and a touchdown. So... I mean, the guy, he may never play another college game. He's going to be a legend for people that remember, you know, this stretch of games. Let's talk about what his loss means. Before we get to the game, before we get to even the Kelly Bryant inch, what does the loss of Cale Garrett mean? I mean, it, he's the best player on the team. I, I think Bryant's the most important player. Cale's the best player, especially the way he's playing. He, I, I think what you lose, not just in the production, but calling the defense, like, he was the guy that knew where all 11 guys were supposed to be. Right. And you can't ask Cameron Wilkins to be out there and tell the defensive end or the safety, no, this is what you're supposed to Like, he probably doesn't, it, he may know that, but he doesn't have that, I guess, kind of gravitas behind him yet. Kale was the guy that you saw come up to the line and moving guys over and looking behind him to make sure everybody's in the right spot, and that's what he's supposed to do. And that's why Barry Odom called him the heart and soul of the defense. Yeah, and, you know, inspirational leader. I think guys looked up to him. I think the older guys that probably knew his backstory that Missouri didn't want him. Nobody really wanted him. He was going to go to Navy until shortly before signing day. Then he shows up, uh, you know, for that semester, and he becomes a starter his freshman year, mm -hmm. midway through the year. Just a, a phenomenal player, a great guy. I, I, think the, I think the guys generally liked him. Um, so, yeah, it's a big loss. What we don't know is how many plays did he make that if he hadn't made, no one else would have made. Right. You know, and, that, what did he cover up for, for other guys' mistakes? Well, and if you looked at both interceptions on Saturday were this way, but it, on both plays, he lined up almost as a fifth defensive lineman, and he showed the quarterback blitz, and then he backed out and dropped to where the quarterback didn't see him. I mean, that's the kind of thing where, who knows, it, maybe it was called, but maybe that's just Kale being a smart football player and a sophomore who's never started a game probably, even if he makes that exact same play, probably can't disguise it quite as well. Maybe right. he's four feet away from where he's supposed to be, and so it's a completed pass. I, you just don't know. Either that or he gets lost in the wash, mm -hmm. and th that's going to be the interesting thing to watch this week. Going back to last week, it's 42-10 to 10 over Troy. They score 42 points in the first half and then look pretty good. Then everybody kind of... After half, it just kind of sort of went downhill because it was 42 points in the first and half. And it was, like, by design. I mean, yes. I think Barry Odom, in his mind, he, did he know Kale was already hurt? Probably. I mean, he knew yeah. he was hurt. How serious? We don't know. He just saw what happened to Kelly Bryant. In his mind, he wants to get that thing over with as fast yeah. as possible. It's amazing. I think both teams only had, like, three possessions in the second half. You know, they, they weren't really getting any big chunk plays, and they weren't really scoring, they weren't doing much of anything. They just wanted to get out of there. I don't know about you, but, like, I was there, and I could not tell you, hey, I remember this play in the second <laughs> yeah, half. Right. Like, I don't remember right. anything about it. And even Derek Dooley said yesterday, these last four games have been weird. Like, when you're up 42-7 at half, every fan wants 84-14, yeah. right? Go do that again. But coaches who are up 42-7 at half just go, just get done. 
Yeah. Like, we don't care really how we look. Yeah, sure, it'd be fine if Taylor Powell threw five touchdown passes, but that doesn't matter. We just want to get this over with and go to the next one. He didn't do that, and, of course, if he does, <laughs> that creates a quarterback controversy. Yeah. But the hit on Kelly Bryant got a flag. Uh, people afterwards said it wasn't dirty. Didn't look to be dirty to me. I mean, it looks like a guy trying to make a play. Well, he, he kind of he was falling down. He got a little push in the back Which from Trevor Sims. I don't think hitting Bryant was dirty. What kind of made people question it is wrapping up the right, the, the leg, leg, and it almost looked like there was a little bit of an ankle twist. But I don't know about you guys. The hit to me honestly didn't look that bad. What what made me think, oh no, was just the way Kelly reacted. Right. He's laying there afterwards, and you're going. That's a guy who knows he just tore his ACL. Right? Yeah. But but as far as watching the hit, like the hit Kyle Trask took looked far worse than the one Kelly Bryant. Right. And he fell back awkwardly. He had nowhere to go mm-hmm. except to fall and land on the guy. Yeah. Um, I didn't. I was watching that. I I was like the only person I think in the press box. They had no idea they scored a touchdown on the play. Well, I was watching the touchdown. Yeah. I had no idea Bryant the was hurt. Because I, yeah. I saw that guy coming in, and I thought, oh, he's not moving. The trainers went out there pretty fast but they, they really appeared to dodge a bullet on that one. And, and it, they said yesterday, what, 90% chance that he'll play? He said he feels 90%. Um, I, I asked him flat out and, and Barry Odom, do you expect him to play barring a setback during the week when we're right. everything's invisible? Sure. And they said yes. Which the problem with that, though, is like – we don't see anything else. They can right. easily not play him and go, yeah. a setback during the week, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. But it, ever, the way everybody talked, it sure seems like he's starting. And it seemed like they dodged a bullet big time, as we said, 42 to 10. They're now four and one overall, one and zero oh in the SEC as we move to homecoming. Uh, and you get Ole Miss coming in. Ole Miss is a team that beat Vanderbilt last week. But as we were talking before the show, it seems like Vanderbilt's pretty bad. Vanderbilt's pretty bad. Ole Miss is not great, but they look a little different than they did at the start of the year because. They had Matt Corral in as the quarterback. He got hurt. They bring in John Reese Plumley, who, frankly, can't throw the ball any better yeah. than maybe Wyoming's guy can, but they don't even try. They're running for 400 yards a game, you know, 300 in the SEC. Like, they'd be perfectly happy to just come in here and not throw a pass all day long. They know what they can do, and that's just what they do. And here you go with your first game without your middle <laughs> linebacker and your yeah. captain on defense against a team that's going to run at them. Yeah, and that's probably not the matchup that you want <laughs> if you're Missouri. Um, you know, I think that maybe the good news is you had that scare against Wyoming. Not that the offenses are the same, but they're similar to where you got to know what to look for. There's going to be some misdirection. There's going to be some things they're going to try to confuse whoever that new linebacker is, if it's Cam Wilkins or Jamal Brooks or whatever. So at least you know that going in. But, um, you know, I, I think this game could if, – if Missouri doesn't get some stops early – Maybe this game does get closer than anybody really thinks. Also, though, like, Kale Garrett is getting the headlines, deservedly sure. so. But let's not pretend he's playing great on an average defense. Right. He's playing yeah. great on a defense where everybody else has been great, too. Nick right. Bolton, like, I, I think he could be a second-team All-SEC type guy. Kobe Whiteside's leading the league in sacks. Jordan Elliott's been better than him. Uh, the secondary has largely, I think, been really good. Bledsoe and Gillespie. Tyree Gillespie hadn't missed a tackle since the Wyoming game, so... It, They've got 10 other guys who are playing pretty well, too. And let's talk about what happened on Saturday, which Troy goes right down the field and scores, and then that was it. I mean, then they kind of made adjustments, buckled down, and said, all right, I don't know what happened there, but let's go. You yeah, know? For, forget about the turnovers, the, the interceptions that Kale Garrett had. You take those out, it's still a dominant performance. I mean, they were just getting stop after stop after stop. It's really hard to run on this team, and when they're – Facing third and long, they bring pressure, and it's it's hard to move the chain. So they're playing really well. Isn't it crazy how often you see a team on the first drive of a game or the first drive of a half just go right down the field? Yeah. And we we all hear about this, well, they script the first 15 plays. Well, script the whole game <laughs> yeah, because yeah. those plays really work, and everything else was terrible. How about we script 30 plays right. or 50 just, plays? Just script the next nine weeks. Yeah, because that certainly seemed like what happened uh, against Troy. So now non-conference kind of moves out of the way, and now you belly up to the SEC bar. And it's the time where you're really going to figure out what this team is. Old Miss comes in. It's homecoming. Saturday's supposed to be the coldest day of the year so far. Uh, I think it's going to be a perfect day for football. But are we going to find out what this team is? I because, know. Because, like, I think I know what this team is, which is 
a cut below the elite teams in the SEC, which is Georgia, Alabama, LSU. And maybe Florida. I, I had thought Auburn. I still have a hard time putting <laughs> Florida up there, but maybe Florida. But after those top three, there's a drop-off, and I think Missouri's in that next group. And the good thing is, Everybody else they play is in that other group, right. like yeah. way below them. Yeah. And I think they stay there whether they win by one or 30 yeah. because no one's going to put them in the – because they don't play anybody to beat until Georgia right. to put them in that top tier. As long as you just win an SEC game, you know, no one's going to have any, you know, thoughts that you're you're not at that level. But they'll move up like national rankings right. because that's what people do. Right. I mean, it, you know, two of the teams like in the bottom six play top ten teams this year. Missouri's going to be ranked if they win this game. Absolutely. So – Around the SEC, we talked about Ole Miss crushing Vanderbilt. Florida beats Auburn. That was the one, I mean, just as everybody wants to write off Florida and say, well, I don't know Florida, I don't know Florida, that's a big win for them. Dan Mullen can coach. I mean, he was down to his third quarterback in that game. And Auburn's defense, we know how good it is. Um, and to face some adversity in that game, bunch of turnovers, crazy game. They're at home, granted, but you know, the place hasn't been, they haven't been unbeatable at home here in you know recent memory. Uh, so I think that's an impressive win. Again, are they that good? Are they that complete? I don't know, but they just keep winning. Right. It can't just be luck every week. And I think, like Dave said, I mean, Emory Jones was in that game for a good quarter. And that's where you find out if you've got a good team or if you've got a really good team, if you can survive. I mean, it, frankly, if losing Kale Garrett means Missouri can't beat Ole Miss, yeah. then really they don't have all that good a program. And Barry Odom hasn't recruited very well if you're that reliant on one guy who isn't a quarterback. That's a very good point. Georgia rolled over Tennessee. Not that that's a big surprise. but <laughs> Tennessee fans seemed really happy only losing that game by 29. Yeah, it, it, but it goes to your point. It, in the East right now, it's Georgia and Florida, and then kind of who's going to be the challenger, if you will. And, and, you know, until before Florida comes here, you know, they still get LSU. They still get Georgia. So, if they win those, heck, we're talking about a playoff team for sure. Yes, title, yeah. If they don't, you know, they're going to look a little vulnerable, and Missouri's got a chance to be that second team. We'll see what happens there. Uh, up next, as we said, Ole Miss homecoming at 6 o'clock. The game is on ESPN2, and something we talked about earlier, the line is at 12, which seems a little big to me. Well, it came out at 8.5, and, and I was surprised it was that low because – and we think it was because Kelly Bryant, nobody knew if he was going to play. Then all of a sudden, Kelly Bryant's going to play, and Kale Garrett's not. And it goes up to 12, which is, I guess, probably where it would have started if Kelly Bryant hadn't taken that hit. We'll see what happens. Again, 6 o'clock on Saturday. When we come back, your tweets, a lot of them this week, asking about different parts of the football program. We'll have that when we come back, right here on Tiger Sidelines on MC22. Welcome back to Tiger Sidelines, everybody. Dave Matter, Gabe DeArmond, and I'm Bo Bayman. We're at Tiger Sidelines on Twitter. It's time to check the old tweet machine, see what you've thrown our way this week. First one from Steve says, how far off am I? If Florida played the same teams as Missouri with the same results, including that loss to Wyoming, Florida would be ranked about 13th. I think it might be a little lower, but they would be ranked. They would be top 20, but it's the reason polls are stupid. Like, Florida started at 8, right. so to fall out... I mean, look, Texas A&M is still ranked. Yeah. Clemson's still number number 2, which they haven't been number 2. It's the one thing I like about the playoff. They don't start ranking teams till like, week 8, and they largely seem to right. do it based on what's actually happened. And I've, I've been a voter before. I know how it works. I, if you have Florida 8, and then they lose, and then they keep winning and have some good wins, well, you drop them, and then you move them up. And if Missouri was down way off your radar, you know, no matter what they do, they haven't done enough yet. So that's kind of yeah. how it works. Especially early in the season, though. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're Michigan and you're 1-0, whatever, then you just lose that god-awful right. game. Like, who says you still have to be right. in that's the top 20 because yeah, right. somebody thought, you know, they're not one of the top 20 right. teams in the country. And, and what do, does it matter if you're 23 or if you're right. out? Well, it's kind of an arbitrary number that 25 right. matters to Barry Odom. Odom. Well, it does for him. Yeah. It's $5,000 $5, every week. week. Absolutely. Right. Now that Mizzou is solidly entrenched into big boy football, who's the biggest eater you've ever covered at Mizzou? Like, when has Missouri not been in big boy football? Like, they've been in a power conference for a long time. 
Yeah. Right? Big Eight was big boy football in the 1950s and the, 60s. Well, in yeah. 1980s, Big Eight was, that was every bit as good as the SEC. I don't know. We don't eat with these guys. I've never shared a meal with the Missouri football player. Well, and they haven't gone to the Beef Eater Bowl or whatever that is where they, yeah. you know, have the steak eating contest or anything. We haven't seen that. Which of you three has the best shuttle time from your press box seat to the bathroom and back? Steve is on a tweet storm this week. Uh, who who wants gonna, to know about our bathroom? I'm uh, going to I'm going to go with yeah. Dave on that. If you're talking the buffet, it's definitely me. I mean, if the game's close, maybe you just have an extra coffee cup. Maybe you yeah. can't get up. Yeah, that's and right. Go. Yeah. Why wouldn't Mizzou offer discounted tickets to Missouri high schools? You possibly get new fans and maybe a new recruit out of it. I yeah. almost spelled Missouri as Missouri, LOL. Okay, here's something that a lot of people don't know. If you are a high school football player in this state, you can get a free ticket to any Missouri football game you want. The coaches have said it at every single camp I've ever been to. You know, my son had high school teammates that were nowhere near Division I recruits. And yep. all you got to do is call over and say, hey, I want to come to the game. They make you a little name tag. You get a ticket. You go to the game. Yeah. So you can so get they in. Do. Right. Yeah. And, and it's a matter of, I understand what he's saying. You know, when you look at the stadium and there's empty seats, why don't you? And they do it like on band day and stuff right. like that. I mean, they do well, offer it, but. I mean, look, they let everybody that worked for Missouri in last week for free. And that place was a graveyard. Yeah, it, I, you can give people tickets, but you can't make them use. And again, them. I was surprised. But my kind of barometer is what is the traffic like on the way to the stadium, and then what's what's the parking lots look like? And I thought they were more full for that game than the South Carolina game. And hmm. you know, the attendance now attendance was a little wow. less, but then the actual attendance when you look in the crowd it was a oh. lot less. Well, yeah. and I've just never understood the I'm just going to tailgate and not go into yeah. the game. Like yeah. if I just want to drink, I will do that at my house. Right. Why would I go through all the trouble of going to a parking lot to drink? That sounds I like I did that when I was 17. I mean, yeah. not that I drank when I was 17 <laughs> obviously, but you, you watched the tank. others. I right. heard about it. Yeah. Uh, Jayhawk slant here from Chaz. <laughs> what does Barry have to do to get fired? There's no excitement around the program. A new big name coach is needed for the program. Like, like, like Les, Les Miles. Miles. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean, he's not getting fired this year, right? Like we can why? agree. I mean, maybe if he lost out, but probably not. I mean, he even brought up the stat after the game. They have the ninth best record in the last 25 games in the country. So they're doing and, something right. You know, we're talking about attendance. Again, you can't make people go, but this week is a test for Missouri fans to me. Last week was Troy. It was a four straight home game, whatever. This is an SEC game on homecoming at the time you all say you want games to be. Yeah. Yeah. If right. there are not 60,000 people there, like this is a program that has the 13th best attendance, the 13th best support, all that in the SEC. You have to quit asking for anything better than right. the 13th best football program, which, by the way, they have better than the 13th best right. program. Everybody complains when homecoming kickoff is at 11. Everybody complains yeah. because, oh, the parade's at 7. And then this, no complaining this time. I mean, it's, you know what we're going to uh, hear. It was so cold and I couldn't. That's what you The game was hear. too late. Yeah. yeah. I, I, the homecoming parade, though, can we just agree that's the most overrated worst thing that ever happens all year long? I'm so over. glad my kids are too old to yeah. want to go anymore. It, it's all free candy. That's all Parades the reason are, they want to go. Parades are all. Uh, now that you guys are in HD, have you increased the makeup budget? No, but Still we have zero, the, zero. the yeah. beer budget. We have increased that. Two, That's two of the three of us have frequently <laughs> worn makeup in our careers, though. That is true. I've worn way more than I should have. <laughs> Maybe Dave, too, just no. not for TV. I don't know. No. No? <laughs> no comment from Dave on that one. Hey, don't forget, we're at Tiger Sidelines on Twitter. You can tweet us before, during, after the game, and we'll answer your questions right here on Tiger Sidelines. Take it a break. When we come back, we'll talk a little bit about Michael Porter Jr. playing a little basketball. That and more when we come back on Tiger Sidelines. Welcome back to Tiger Sidelines, everybody. Gabe, Dave, and Bo here, and let's talk about a little basketball. Men's basketball hosting an open practice on homecoming Saturday, as they like to do. It'll be Saturday at 1.30, first chance for fans to see what the squad looks like. And as we've mentioned here on this show, Conzo Martin likes his team. He's mm -hmm. talking up this team going into this year. Yeah, first chance really for us to see him, too. Right. Uh, I mean... 
I, I know this is going to fall on deaf ears. Everyone will draw conclusions. It is <laughs> yes. like there's no point to do so, but everyone right. will. No question about it. And a former Tiger from Seattle uh, played last night uh, it, that you could sort of watch Blazers and Nuggets, and there's Michael Porter Jr. finally getting in to an NBA game, even though it was preseason. That the fans were really into this one because, you know, he hasn't played a game in forever, and, uh, you know, it, it was preseason. He got, I think he scored nine points. Came, didn't come into the game till late in the third quarter. I stayed up and watched it. Um, I'm not sure why. It was, uh, <laughs> he, he's going to need some work. It, he doesn't, he's a little slow on defense. He doesn't play like he's 6'10". Like, he doesn't really rebound the ball. He's a, he's a guard. Um, but he can shoot and he can score, and he's going to find some moments where he's going to look impressive this year. But I don't, I don't know about the wear and tear, the back-to-back games, just the the adversity that you hit in that schedule that long that he's never been close to playing before. And Gabe, you mentioned this before. He's on a good team. Yeah. I mean, like he's going to be down the bench a little bit. Yeah. Um, I was promised it was no longer my job to discuss <laughs> Michael Porter Jr. and whether he would play basketball or not. So. Good for him. I will see zero minutes of it. Um, I don't watch the NBA normally, and I'm not changing it for this. Just wait till we start tweeting it to you, and you have to watch. Well, the, I mean, no, the I don't clip. have to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there is there is a mute conversation yes. button on Twitter. Mizzou football is going to host the South End Zone Facility Open House this Friday from seven to nine, which I think during the homecoming weekend is a pretty good idea. I, I want to know if the bar is open because, like, house decks happen on Friday night. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's know? right. I like. They should be selling booze at that thing. Otherwise, why, why go? I mean, why sell beer in the games right. if yeah. you can't do it? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, open house, cool. But I think, like, if you're selling your house, if you had an open house, sell booze at that. A lot yeah. more people are coming. You got that right. Number 22 volleyball team, two wins last week. They won at LSU, and then they were down 2 nothing to Texas A&M and came back to win 3-2. to two. The Tigers are now 10-3. and three. And two and one in the SEC, and Kylie DeBerg was named the SEC overall and offensive player of the week. A couple of wins that they had to have. I believe they dropped. I can't remember if it was the first or the second set at LSU, and you thought, "Uh oh, here we go." And then they finally turned it around. Yeah, that A and M win was was huge too, because that looked like they were they were done in that one, and to come back like that. I know it was at home, and I don't think A and M's ranked right now, but that's still an impressive win. Absolutely, they won the fourth set, thirty one to twenty nine in that one. Up next, Tigers travel to Auburn on Friday, host Tennessee on Sunday. Soccer loses again to number seven South Carolina, one to nothing. The team which started out well, six five and one now, o oh, three and one in the SEC, and Brian Blitz's team has to get some conference wins, otherwise they're not going to make the conference Yeah, this tournament. all looks kind of familiar, right, yes. in this program. Like, oh, yeah, we beat some teams, beat some – oh, now the, the, the teams we've yeah. heard of, eh, not as much. Absolutely. Tigers will host Tennessee on Sunday at 1 p.m. All right, some games this week. There's Alabama at Texas A&M. Everybody expect Alabama to win? Yeah, I yeah. saw they're favored by 17, which kind of seems like a big number, but like I just don't think Texas A&M's good. What, what have they done to impress yeah. anybody except they, not get blown out by Clemson? They covered against Clemson and was it Auburn? I don't know. They lost to somebody else. They covered, but that right, was about it. Right, but they were, Auburn controlled that game, and they yeah. almost lost Arkansas. Then you have Oklahoma and Texas, and that could be a pretty decent game. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's not the is, Iron Bowl. I but. heard a ridiculous stat this morning. Oklahoma is not covered in this game in seven years. I mean, wow. they, they usually win, but they haven't covered in a while. A lot of offense in this game. It'll be fun to watch. Penn State will be at Iowa this week. It's a, not a lot of offense in that <laughs> game. No, it, it big test to me for the Nittany Lions. They've been pretty impressive, but going on the road and Iowa's ranked. Still, just, un, still undefeated. I mean, yeah. they're quietly still hanging around there as a playoff. This team. is exactly the game Iowa always wins. They yeah, always right. beat somebody. They win a top 15 game at home every single year. Back in the SEC, we mentioned if Florida will be at LSU, a second straight tough test for yeah, the Gators. It is. LSU is so potent on offense. And they're coming um, off a bye, right? Yeah, I think they're favored by 13 or 12 or so. And um, this is Florida's test. If they win this one, then talk about them as a, as a legit playoff team. Do they have a chance? I forget. I mean, I don't know. Every week I think they're going to get beat. Yeah, and yeah. they somehow, like if they manage to win this game 23-20, I, I guess it won't shock me, but I would definitely pick LSU. Absolutely. All right, and then the one we've been talking about, Ole Miss at Missouri. It's a chance for Missouri to go to 2-0 and in the SEC on homecoming. 
They got to do it. I mean, they yeah. they just got to come out and play football. When you get this schedule and you're West of Ponce or Ole Miss and Arkansas, yeah. you got you got to win those games. Uh, I think they should. I think there's a little trepidation that you just don't know if this defense is good as it's been. Is it going to be the same without Kale Garrett? Yeah. And I think in a perfect world, like hey, you come out and you light up the scoreboard and you look really good, and and the defense keeps doing what it's done. But I wonder if just going in there isn't a little bit of hey, we just got to find a way because Kelly Bryant's. I, even if he plays, he's not quite what he was. We got a new middle linebacker. Like, if you win this game 17-14, fine. Like, just find some way. Let's talk about this just before we go. We tape this on Wednesday. What happens if Kelly Bryant doesn't play? I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, that's kind of Barry Odom's M.O. Very uh, encouraging and very confident uh, on Tuesdays. And then there's something happens where it's, you know, he just wasn't ready to go. Yeah. The only difference, though, in this one versus some of the others, like, we we got to talk to Kelly on Tuesday. Right, right. And I, my impression was not that it was even in his head that I'm not going to play. Exactly. It, it seemed to me, yeah, I was scared for a minute, and then, hey, it's over. I feel good. Let's go. And so if he plays and they get up big, does he come out, you think? I think Do we so. Learn? I mean, like every other game. Right. Yeah. 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 No sense keeping him in there. But it is an SEC game. But, and I mean, Well, and I think the interesting thing will be, any designed runs? Like, yeah. it, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you can get hurt on any play. Right. But somebody's got to send Kelly over to Steve Beezer and teach him how to slide. Because not just yeah. that hit. He took a couple. He's taken four or five this year where you thought concussion. And and the uh, the sideline should protect you, but sometimes you get hit going out of bounds. Yeah. And he has a few times already this year. Something to keep our eye on. We'll discuss it next week. Old Miss in Mizzou, 6 o'clock, homecoming Saturday here in Columbia. Thanks for watching uh, Tiger Sidelines. We want to thank Bill and Brian and Matt behind the scenes. That's Gabe DeArmond, Dave Matter, I'm Bo Bame, and we'll see you next week on the Sidelines. You've been watching Tiger Sidelines on MC22.